Do you think it'd be possible to make money if you knew what the future held? Yes. Say yes. yes. If you could read and see into the future, is it possible that you would make more money than anybody else? Yes. If you knew what the future held for you and for the rest of the country and the world, is it possible that you could take advantage of that situation, yes. solve some problems before their problems, and make a lot of money? Is that fair to say that you could? What would make me inspired to teach the future of real estate? Why, Melanie? Your mission is to build 100 million. My mission is to build 100 millionaires. Let's give Melanie a round of applause. What's the easiest way to build 100 millionaires? Names on deeds. Names on deeds. I don't know another industry that makes it this easy. All you gotta do is buy a piece of real estate that cash flows, hold it long enough, and any idiot can become a millionaire. I am living proof. I was not that smart when I started. My financial freedom has allowed me to be smarter. Does that make sense? My money has allowed me to buy coaches, training, travel the country, get into the right places, the right rooms, get the right information. My free time has allowed me to read the 350, and by the way, it's over 350, I just haven't paid attention recently. I've gotta go back and recount everything I've read. Over 350 books, blogs, I couldn't even tell you how many blogs, researches, TikToks I've watched, because you know, TikTok's always right. But the real reason is because I get asked this question all the time. On my mission to build 100 millionaires, who are inspired to build 100 millionaires, I am constantly asked, what is the future of real estate? Where is it going? Well, there are factors to real estate. Interest rates are a big one. The economy is another one. The government policies are another one. Technology has an impact on real estate. We've seen that with property management. We've seen that with real estate agents. Institutional investors playing the game that we play, coming into our space, has an impact. Labor shortage that we've seen recently. Migratory patterns where everybody's just moving in a very unique, very consistent, very stable and predictable manner has an impact. These are the f 10 fastest growing states in the country. That valuable information to have. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> give so much, give so much value that they practically beg you to give them more. Does that make sense? They're like, hey, can I pay you for this? Does this make sense? Do it in your business. You can take a picture if you'd like. Kidding. Now, I'll send you guys the PowerPoint. Would that be valuable? Yes. Okay. Here are the percentage of outbound total moves. These are the states they are leaving. Leaving. None of this is a surprise, right? It makes sense. Logically, in your head, you're like, I get why. Inbound moves. Inbound moves. This is where the money is. Demographics. This next slide may be a little morbid. I'm warning you now. Children, if there are children in the room, Hold your parents' hands. They're gonna need it. 35 to 44, typically they buy their first house. At 45 to 54, typically they sell their first house and buy their second house. At 65 and plus, this is where we get our discount. The average baby boomer right now is anywhere between 57 to 75 years old. The average buyer age right now in this country is 45 years old but 25% of those buyers are millennials. Here's the life expectancy of a human being in America. So the women are living a little bit longer. So typically the seller you're gonna be talking to is a woman who's lost her husband. So you're gonna to have to learn how to sell from the heart. You have to learn how to deal with some shit in their lives. Does that make it sense? You can't go in there just being a dick on the phone saying, hey, I want to buy your house. You have to understand, like, this woman's lost her family, everything. She's got a situation going on. She needs the money, but she also needs some love. She needs to be spoken to like a human being who's lost some stuff. Real estate travels in an 18-year cycle because that's the life cycle of a human being in the buying age. They buy at 45, they die at 75. 
So in the 30 years in between, there is about 10 years of padding. Well, I guess it's 12 years of padding, but it's 18 years between the max peak of purchases and max peak of sales. And the cycle looks like this. Very much so, and you can see this over and over. You see it every two decades, we have the cycle. It goes up, it comes down, it goes up. By the way, in stock market charts and in crypto charts, right, Mitch? This W stands for a win. And this right here, we call this a bull trap, where it goes for a win, it goes up, looks like it's gonna pull a win, goes up again, and it always comes down. The bull trap makes people think, we're gonna keep going up again! The cycle continues. And after 18 years, everybody fucking forgets that the market does have to correct. The reason it corrects is because too many people pushed in a certain direction too fast. Am I putting you to sleep? This is tough. I know. No, I fuck the charts. Here's the point. <laughs> Did it for everybody, right? <laughs> Here's why this is important. The baby boom generation is 75 years old at the peak, the oldest of them. It's going to take them about 10 years to get rid of all of their inventory before, them, before they all die off. They die off in the next three years. They don't start dying for another three years. They're holding the most inventory right now. 62% of inventory is held by baby boomers in the baby boom generation. The biggest generation until the millennials showed up. The millennials are now at buying age. At least 25% of them are. And so the millennials are buying at the same time the baby boom generation is holding. We're right in the last two to three years of what's called the winner's circle. You see, in the winner's circle, it's a, the story is that you go to a flea market or a, an auction, and you got those people who are bidding on something, and they're bidding up the price. They all know what the price should be. They all know what they can sell it on the market for. So they bid up, they bid up, they bid up, and they get close, and they get close, and they push, and the profit margin gets slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. And so there's always some jackass who buys it for a little bit more. We're seeing this in the market right now, right? Well, they won that bid, didn't they? Ah, oh, they won. They're so lucky they got the house or they got the deal. Two years later, the other side of the winner's circle, the downward spiral. Never catch the falling knife. This is cycles. This is only relevant for flipping. Only relevant for Flipping, us buy and hold, we don't give a shit what the market does. I mean, it does affect our lending. It does affect how quickly we can acquire things. So during this period, this bull trap, this is where you want to make sure that you're getting access to capital. When I say capital, I'm no longer saying the dollar. I'm no longer saying cash. What I am saying is Bitcoin. And Bitcoin has a very similar chart, and I watch what Mitch posts every day, every week, because he has been 100% accurate forecasting what the coin is going to do. Now, he can't predict the day or the time, but he can say, eventually, it's coming back to this point, most likely. And he says it that way. He's like, look, I can't guarantee you. Had two at 10,000, sold them both at 14,000, and I was like, ah, I'm a crypto master. Mitch Jorsky can suck it. And then it kept going up and up and up. And I was like, I'll buy in at 12,000. Nah, maybe I'll buy in at 14,000. Nah, maybe I'll buy in at 16,000. And then I went to 30,000 and 40,000 and 50,000 and 60,000 and 68,000. And then Mitch was like, it's going to come back to 30. And I was like, okay, when it gets to 30, I'm going to buy it at 28. It doesn't work like real estate. See, real estate, we get the advantage of local markets, local situations. In this game, it's global, like Mitch was talking about. So we don't hold cash as much as we hold crypto because the dollar will continue to go down in value. Crypto will continue to go up in value. Certain coins will go up over the long term. So long term, we're holding cash in crypto. We are also holding our short-term cash. We call this money flow. 
flow is still held in our bank accounts. This is what we use for down payments. It's what we use for keep acquiring and moving the company forward. Our flow is somewhere around half a million dollars. Your flow may start off at 5,000 or 50,000. Does that make sense? Thank you.